Well, good morning, everyone. It's February 25th, and I thought we'd check out the seedlings, see how they're doing. Now, some of these I started, let me see this, um, towards the end of January, this um, Rubenzo Cosmos here, the tag that I just pulled out. I don't know if it's going to focus on that or not. Um, anyhow, it says January 23rd, and then I have the height on there, 48 inches. So some of the stuff I started in January, and then I have some more that I started in February, and some as late as um, a couple weeks ago that I've reseeded or started more of. Um, These up here that are getting kind of tall up to my lights. Probably going to have to move my lights on this shelf for too long. Double Dutch Cosmos. And I don't know if you can, how well you can see that, but we have a flower bud on there. So I'm probably going to have to cut that off or get them planted out. Um, we still have, you know, it's still early. Our last frost date is generally right around um, second to third week of April. So... Some of these things can tolerate a light frost, so some things I may go ahead and put out, um, like the straw flowers, the um, gosh, I have tons of them. Let me think. Snapdragons. I don't know why that wasn't coming to me. And then um, the kale. I've got some of it already hardening off. Up here we have Dalmatian Rose Foxglove. And I really got pretty good germination rate on just about everything. There's a couple seed packets that I got from one company in particular, which I'm not going to call out, but that I got very poor germination on. And they were pretty expensive seeds, as seeds go. So I was very disappointed by that. Um, this Lavender Blue Didiscus here, I actually had to reseed it, um, but the second time I've got much better germination. We have some of the timeless ageratum here, and it's a mix. This Highlander grass, I actually only got three out of 12 cells, but that's probably enough. I'd probably... Um, Probably 12 would have been way too many, anyhow. Um, the Sunball Crispedia I just sowed on the 12th of February. I haven't even thinned it out yet. Um, kind of waiting to see how much of it comes up and if I need to have an empty cell that I might need to move one. See, I've got a couple back here, but I've got an empty cell right here and right here. And so if that doesn't come up, I may move some of those. Let's go ahead and go down the next shelf here. I have some Dara. All these pink um, plant tags were planted on February 4th. I kind of went, um, I had bought this box of plant tags that have pink, yellow, white, green. I think that may be all the colors. Anyhow, so on whatever day that I did them, I used a different plant tag. So I kind of know which ones I needed to keep moist um, while they were germinating. Anyways, I have a lot of Dara here. Um, this is Convolvulus mix. Um, some dark opal basil, which I've never grown basil before. I'm kind of looking forward to that. Some zinnias. Um, forest mix zinnia. Crackle zinnia. And then I have some of the fuchsia canna lilies. And these are the ones that I had in the garden last year um, that I saved the seeds from. And I have a ton of seeds, but I wasn't sure if they would actually even come up because I've never never started any from seed. Now that I know that they will and they're doing just great, I'll probably go ahead and start some more of those. Um, and then on the following shelf, these were also planted on the fourth. Um, this over here is 
some blue or white salvia and it was from seed that I saved. So I just got one out of 12 there. So I could use the, the rest of those cells and plant something else, but I don't know if I will or not. Um, this Mexican Tithonia sunflower, it didn't have the greatest germination, but we got some there. Then I have a couple different kinds of amaranth. I have red spike and velvet curtains. And I have a whole cell here that is empty. And I think I probably missed that cell and didn't get it planted because everything else I've had to thin out like crazy. I mean, it was just very dense. So I'm pretty sure I would have gotten at least one in there or more if I'd actually planted it. I have some Walla Walla onions over here. They're kind of laying down. I'm debating whether to cut the tops off a little bit so that they won't break. I probably will do that and try to get those planted out before too long. They can take a little cold. Um, down here, the yellow tags here, I started on the 12th. I have mahogany slender hibiscus. And I probably have way too much of that. Some white dill ami. Or Ami, I'm not sure how you say that. And then some elephant dill. And I didn't get very good germination on it either. But, as I say, I know I have more plants than I will ever be able to use. I do have someone who's willing, uh, a friend, co-worker, who's willing to take some of my plants. Um, if I have lots left over. On this second shelf here, I have lots of zinnias. I have a giant dahlia mix, Benary's giant red, Benary's giant purple. I know the camera's not focusing very well and we have some pretty harsh light, so I apologize for that. Let me turn this one around so we can see the names here. Um, these are still zinnias. I have the cactus mix, profusion apricot. Okay. Down here I have um, the vegetables that will go in the new, new raised beds. Um, for tomatoes, I just planted two cherry tomatoes because they just get outrageously large and we can't eat all the tomatoes that come on them. So I've held myself back. And just have two plants. And then I have two beefsteak tomatoes back there. And then two of the big beef tomatoes. I've got some Jedi jalapenos. And then two different kinds of cayenne. One is a long thin cayenne. And the other one is what's it called? Red rocket cayenne. And they're much fatter. But actually we got a bigger yield on the long thin ones. So that's why I went back to using more of those this year. On this next shelf, I have the red crane kale, <laughs> and I've potted it on up, which I've told you maybe on numerous occasions that I do not like to pot things up. I like to start them in a cell that they can stay in until they go out in the ground. But the roots were just coming out the bottom of them like crazy, and I was losing some leaves. As you can see, there's a leaf in there that doesn't look too good, but... I was losing some of my leaves and I was worried that I might be damaging the plants too much by leaving them. And so I went ahead and potted these up a little bit higher to a bigger pot rather. And then I have one group. I think they were in the 16 cell packs. Let me switch around here. I have one group that I would have outside hardening off. Yeah, it was a... Uh, this, the 16 cell pack from Burpee. So there's 16 there. There's 16 outside that I'm hardening off. And those have just taken off since I put them in a bigger pot. The others are about half the size. And I'll, they're actually hardened off already. I just haven't got them in the ground yet. Down here. Let's see. I have to get this a little bit closer. Emperor Wave Sedum. I haven't had the best germination with that. What do we have? Three, 
or it is kind of slow to germinate, though, I've noticed. Because that was done on, let me see here, January 23rd. It is slow to germinate and slow to grow. There's a little bitty tiny one right there. Anyhow, so we'll just leave those alone. Um, a scabiosa mix, a black knight scabiosa, a deep blue scabiosa, and the stock. Gosh, what's the name on that? Hotcakes. Sorry, sometimes I can't read my own writing. And then an iron blue stock. Next to it, we have pink cushion mix scabiosa, some more black knight scabiosa. Some of this I just seeded because, I don't know, for some reason I thought I hadn't um, started any scabiosa. And I kind of went through and looked one day and I didn't see it. So apparently I overlooked it and so I planted some more. So we'll have plenty of that. And black eyed Susans. And it's black eyed Susan vine. And I only got one. Looks like it's going to be a good one. But there's just one in there. So that was one of the seeds that I was talking about that were a little more on the expensive side that didn't germinate very well at all. All right. The next rack. Snapdragons. We have Madame Butterfly Red. Madame Butterfly Bronze. Um, some Impatience, Peach Salmon, and Cherry Red. And they've all done good, and I've tried to keep things thinned really well, which is very hard for me to do. I'll show you my little bucket here full of stuff. And why it stays like that. I mean, it's been several days since I've done any, but it's staying green. I guess there's enough humidity in here. Okay, we have Oklahoma Pink Zinnias, Painted Daisy Mix, and that's some of the last that I started, yeah, 216. Early Bird Zinnia, early, or Binneries, Salmon Rose, some more Painted Daisies, some Blue Glitter Sea Holly, some Guardian Lavender Delphiniums, um, Echinacea Paradiso Mix, Paradiso. And then back here in the corner, which I can't really get to, we have some Echinacea purpurea. Straw flowers. I'm going to have enough straw flowers, no doubt. Well, the tags must be on the other side, of course. I tried to turn most of these around before I started filming because... Who knows the names to all these things? Definitely not me. Um, oh, that's stock. Cat's Ruby stock. Straw flower. Oh. Monstrosium. Where did that come out from? I'm going to say right there. And then a yellow straw flower. Have some geraniums over here in the corner. Apple blossom. Coral. I like that, that it has a little ring around it. And then some more stock mix back here. Today is my watering day. Some of this stuff won't get watered. It's still a little bit wet. Let's we'll start over here in the corner on this bottom shelf. We have rainbow mixcoleus. All, all those are rainbow mixed colors, and those I just started also not very long ago. Two, four, and I just thinned those out a few days ago. Delphinium Magic Fountains mix, and mid blue white delphiniums. Here we have yellow snapdragons and rocket mix snapdragons. And I think I counted one day, well, I know I counted one day. But I got somewhere between 1,400 and 1,500 seedlings, so I will definitely have enough. 
probably more than my garden will support. Up here we have some rainbow mixed dahlias and some cactus mixed dahlias. And I did have to reseed some of that. So you can see some of them are smaller and then some of them are much larger. But I wanted a bunch of those and so that's why I went ahead and reseeded. I'm just banging things around here. Okay, we have some silvery rose straw flowers, some apricot peach straw flowers, some snowy spikes verbascum, some purple red straw flowers. Those were seeded on the 12th. And more purple red straw flowers. I had to get some more of those seeds. I really didn't have very many left from last year, so. Let's see, this, these herbs I just seeded on the 12th also. I have some summertime and some rosemary. I don't know why my tags are opposite in this one, but they are. Some king apricot asters, and they did not germinate very well. As you can see, I've just got one, two, three out of 12 cells. On that side and then I've got one two three four out of 12 cells so a total of seven out of 24 is not very good ratio some Valkyrie mix asters only four some Matsumoto mixed aspers asters and only three of those I have started asters before so I don't really think it's use or error but who knows I have some yarrow here Fruit, oh, fruit bowl, flower burst. Y'all probably can't read my writing any better than I can. And some dichondra silver falls there. And two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Out of 12. Some more snapdragons. Orange Potomac. Chantilly cream yellow. Chantilly bronze and Potomac Yellow. And then I set out a few things here on this little old sewing table to show you. My sweet peas have gone crazy and I did seed multiple um, seeds in each one of these little pots. I have been snipping them back. You can see here. They've kind of been growing at different rates, so not all of them have got um, pinched back yet, but I've been trying to keep up with that, and they'll go out pretty soon. Let's see what's in here. Mixed foxglove. The main reason I set this one out was because I wanted to show you all these hyacinth. I did not grow these. I picked up these two little pots at Walmart just because. I love the smell of hyacinth, and so I thought that would bring a nice fragrance to this room. And they weren't in bloom when I got them, but they were close, and so, yeah. It didn't take them very long. Put them in this nice warm room that I keep around 70 degrees with my heater, and they popped popped out real quick. Um, I have some giant mar yellow marigolds here, and these are also starting to put on little little flower buds. So, I don't know, I'll probably pinch those, those buds back. I don't want them flowering just yet. Um, some red stem celosia, some more Dara because I decided I needed more of that. And some seashell mix coreopsis. So, that is what's going on here in my seat starting room. And it's a lot. It really is. I water about every other day, and I fertilize once a week. I have my calendar here for my fertilizing. I've been doing pretty good with that. See, I went a little over a week here, but I've been trying to keep up towards the end of the week, at least getting it done. So, Oh, I have one other thing in here I forgot. 
This is an incredible, incredible hydrangea, and it was propagated. It wasn't propagated by me. It just happened naturally in nature. When I was cutting back my Incredibles, I noticed that this one, for some reason, one stem had gotten under the ground, and the the dirt was growing over over the top of a portion of it. But when I pulled it up, it had its own root system. And so I cut it away from the mother plant, and it really had a big bowl of roots. And so I thought, I have a new plant here. Well, I couldn't figure out where to put it at the time, and so I thought, I'm just going to go ahead and take it inside, get it going, and then I'll figure it out or give it away or something. And you can see, or maybe, that it has some little little buds that are, that are starting to pop out and none of mine outside are doing that yet so so it is going to be a little farther along than the others and that's okay it's going to be a very young one so it's not going to probably do a whole lot this year but yeah it's nice to have a new free plant you can't beat that can you okay well if you all are starting seeds or getting ready for the growing year I wish you all the best of luck and hope you have good success. Until next time, this is Kay with In and Out of the Garden. Bye.